Hello, long time no see. This is Cathy Cassidy and I'm back with another Sunday Book Club. Um, it might be quite a short spring season this time, but a lot of you have joined me on social media and sent messages and some of you have been leaving messages on my YouTube channel asking if Sunday Book Club would come back. So I thought it would be nice just to come back and say hello, see how you're all getting on and tell you how I am. Um, and yeah, even though here in the UK we are slowly edging out of lockdown um, and slowly, slowly um, tiptoeing back towards a more normal way of life, it's a slow process and we all need a bit of support and a bit of, you know, stuff to make us smile to help us through it. But I know that a lot of my readers are outside of the UK and some of you are in countries where things are not going as well with the pandemic. Um, I think the very nature of a pandemic is that there are going to be ups and downs and um, we might be at a, a more positive part, but there are some countries who are struggling very, very badly right now. Um, and I'm thinking in particular of India. I have some amazing readers in India and I know that India is facing huge, huge challenges right now. Um, with the virus, so sending lots and lots of love and prayers to India. But what I'm thinking is all of us still need to support each other and help each other. And it, sometimes it's the really little things that can really make the difference. And one of the things um, that have made me smile over the last few weeks was is getting messages and cards from people you don't normally see. And this card and a letter came from my friend Fiona Gibson, um, a fellow author. And, you know, if, if we have any adults watching and listening, who um, would like a really laugh out loud, um, easy to read, fun read. Fiona Gibson is an author to check out. She really is fantastic. But she sent me this lovely card. Um, it, it, the title, Woof Hall, it's like a book cover, a little dog on it. She knows I like dogs. And she also knows my husband and I love the trilogy Wolf Hall, but this has got a little joke on it. So it's Wolf Hall. So definitely, definitely made me smile. And sometimes making something special for somebody um, because you know them well and you know exactly what's going to make them smile can make all the difference. So if there's somebody that you're missing and you haven't seen them for a while, um, maybe make them something, bake them something, post them something, paint them something, make a little video, do something to make them smile. I also wanted to tell you about another little card I was sent, which I think will make all of you smile. So this lovely little card was sent to me by a reader called Emily. And Emily said in her letter, that she had been reading Sammy's Silver Lining, my book about a refugee boy. And she found the story so moving that she made her mum read it and the two of them talked about it afterwards. Emily said it was a bit of an eye opener. She hadn't realised what refugees had to go through and she really, really wanted to do something to help. So what Emily began to do is make these beautiful little cards using hammer beads. I don't know if some of you maybe have used those in the past, um, but they're such beautiful cards. And she started to sell them to friends and neighbours. And when the schools opened up again, she began selling them um, to schoolmates and families um, around her school. And she's made over £200, I think, at the moment and more um, all the time. And given that money to a, a refugee charity called Safe Passage, which is mentioned in the back of Sammy's Silver Lining. And I found that the most amazing. It, it kind of made my eyes go all misty. Um, I was so proud of Emily and I just I just think my readers are the best humans ever. I really do. But what an inspiring thing to do. Um, Emily's obviously now back at school and I think her story will inspire her classmates and teachers. Maybe you know somebody who has done something inspiring recently or who just lives their life in a very inspiring way. Perhaps they deserve one of our lovely certified amazing human being badges that we um, were giving out earlier in the year. So if you know somebody like that, please let me know. Um, and yeah, we'll give them a mention and send them a badge, perhaps. Um, yeah, so Last but not least, before we get on to my book recommendations for today, 
I have a little giveaway and the giveaway is of this beautiful print. I've got two copies of it um, to give away. It's of a little girl, a bicycle, and the bicycle is piled high with books. So I think it would be the perfect thing for someone who loves reading. Now, this um, beautiful print was sent to me um, by another fellow author, um, Deborah Morgan, from, that I knew from Liverpool who said, told me that she'd been drawing a lot through the lockdown and she wondered if I would like a couple of copies of that um, particular drawing to give away to readers. And I think it's an ideal thing to launch the new little spring season of uh, Sunday Book Club with. So if you would like a copy of that um, or you'd like to be in the running for getting a copy of it, please just send me a message on Facebook, on Instagram, um, an email, or just leave your message on the YouTube channel and I will pull names out of a hat. UK only, please, if that's okay, because post is still a little bit upside down. But yeah, um, I think that would be, it would I, either keep it yourself or give it as a present. It's a lovely little thing. So let's get on to the books bit. First one up, they're all children's books today. Um, and they're all things I've newly read. So first of all is Windrush Child by Benjamin Zephaniah, which I ordered during the lockdown from one of my favourite book bookshops in um, Wigtown, um, a lovely little book town that, that has tons of bookshops and, and hosts a fabulous book festival. Windrush Child by Benjamin Zephaniah um, is a really powerful and gripping story. It's about the Windrush generation. Um, and if you don't know much about that, I really recommend trying to read this book. After the war in the UK, um, we needed in, in the UK, we needed more workers to help help the country get back on its feet. And workers were invited to come over from the Caribbean and they travelled to the UK on ships like the Windrush and its sister ships. And they um, they came to settle here and to do lots and lots of jobs that um, we desperately needed help with. However, the UK didn't always treat those workers very well. And over the years, some of them have been denied um, citizenship from the country that, that invited them here. Um, some have been denied a passport. Some have been deported and sent home. It's really quite shocking. Um, but a story I think all of us, all of us should know. So, yeah, it's um, definitely, definitely a page turner and definitely something I think you'd love. So the next book I want to tell you about is very, very different. It's a primary school or top of primary school story um, with a football theme. And um, I'm showing you the cover, but it's actually not the cover of the book or the title of the book on, on the cover. It's a proof copy, so it's been sent to me um, before publication. The book is actually going to be called Jazz Santos Versus the World, and it's by Pris Priscilla Mante. And it is a really um, lovely, fast-paced story about a girl who loves football and has quite a lot of, of struggle to be able to join in with a young girls' football tournament um, because there's quite a lot of opposition in her school, um, amongst her friends, um, amongst the boys, amongst the teachers, etc. But Jazz Santos is the kind of girl who will not take no for an answer. And her story is a fabulous one. It's a real page turner again. It's fun. Um, you know, it's just spot on. The, the, the voice is lovely. And I think if you know anybody um, who really loves football, they're going to love this. And if we stay on the theme, so Jazz Santos versus the World will be out very, very soon. Um, it may just have been published, actually, but it's um, you can definitely pre-order it from any good bookshop or online. If you are keen on football themes for stories, um, you might remember me mentioning Kicking Off by Eve Ainsworth um, in an earlier Sunday book club. I think early on in the year, it might have been January. Um, again, a really good book, but this one based on an historical um, women's football team um, who did incredibly well in, in the first part of the 20th century. Interestingly, um, the, the Dick Kerr ladies football team uh, is actually mentioned in Jazz Santos book because they are kind of heroes of, of women's football. However, I just wanted to mention 
that Eve Ainsworth has now brought out a sequel to this and um, it's called The Winning Shot, I think. Um, but anyway, um, that might not be the title, I can't remember. Um, but do look up Eve Ainsworth and yeah, you will see you will see her sequel to this, which I think is published this week. And I am definitely going to find out the right title um, and get my hands on it because I loved kicking off. So, yeah, a big definite must read. Now, the last book I want to tell you about today, again, was recommended to me online and it's by an author called Sarah Pennypacker. And it's called Here in the Real World. And somebody I liked online was telling me that it was a really good book. And I thought, I'm going to give it a try. Wasn't sure about it. Have never read this author before. It's an American book and it absolutely blew me away. I love it to pieces. It is a magical story about a boy who doesn't fit in um, and a girl who, for completely different reasons, doesn't fit in either. And together, out of a piece of waste ground and um, a derelict, a derelict church, they actually create a magical world. That if this is the most feel-good book that I've read in years. I absolutely love it, and I am absolutely in in love with the work of Sarah Pennypacker. And I do know that she has written another book. It's called Pax, um, which I know was quite popular in the last year or two. And uh, although I, although the cover of this book was familiar to me, I never, you know, I never picked it up and bought it. I never read it. The minute I had finished reading um, here in the real world, I instantly had to order packs and this is next on my reading list. So I will report back and let you know um, exactly what I make of it. But I, I kind of guarantee that already I know I'm going to love it. So those are my story recommendations for today. And uh, yeah, I'm a bit rusty at the whole Sunday book club thing again. It's funny how, how, uh, yeah, how, how it, how you kind of get less easy with sitting in front of a camera after a few, a few weeks off of not actually doing it. But yeah, um, I hope you've enjoyed today's slightly stilted and slightly awkward kind of uh, recommendations and it's just been really nice for me to be able to share and catch up with what we're all doing so please leave me comments let me know what you're doing how you are how you're getting on whether you're still staying safe whether you're enjoying having a bit more freedom how things are for you because yeah and and don't forget to ask questions too um, because I'm happy to answer questions if I if you know if I can fit them in between the book recommendations why not I'm gonna maybe talk about some um, adult books next week uh, and maybe some favorite books as well over, over the week you know over the weeks too um, let's make this little spring season of Sunday Book Club a nice one a lovely one a feel-good one so yeah forgive me for, for being a little bit kind of creaky at this but it's so nice to be back. I will see you again next Sunday. Until then, stay safe. Keep smiling. Don't forget to enter the giveaway. Don't forget to tell me about the inspiring people in your life who might deserve a badge, etc. Yeah, um, and just take care. I'll see you soon.